Ah. Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. Veni, veni, venios. Nene mori fasios. Veni, veni, venios. And it is time for us to take yet some more time together here in week number two in season three of the Pokemon Premier League. This week, the Victorian Shadows will be up against the Solihull Skarmors. And through a little bit of adjustments, we have a new team. First, we took all of the infinity energy that came from the Pokemon that fell in the very first week where we lost against Mounte and the Immunity Idols. Yes, we had drafted several of those Pokemon, but we have taken their loss and those Pokemon that we did not even have hit the battlefield. And we have used them to imbue our team with even more power. Up first, no longer do we have Girder, Levani, Bramblegast, or Dodrio. No, no. Now we have Annihilate. All of that anger. Do you see how it strengthens this team? Do you feel it inside? Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Now, in addition to Annihilate, I realized that our team really benefited from the ability to just spam the opponent with some flying type attacks. And while I was not able to keep Dodrio in these transactions, I did decide to capture two more avian adversaries for our opponents to face. And those are Articuno, the legendary bird Pokemon of ice, and Murkrow, the crow of the night. Now, if these are not on team for the Victorian Shadows to just win and win with this team. I really just don't know what else we will be doing. Now with that in mind, we have a new team and we also have new Terra Captains this week. We have adjusted our Terra Captains. Claude Sire will no longer wear the mantle of the Terra Captain. We will keep Bronzong with that very same mantle. Bronzong will be able to Terra into Steel, Poison, and Fighting type. Grafii will be able to Terra into Dark, Flying, and Rock type. That's right, we have even removed Lycan Rock from this team and taken its essence and condensed it down into a Terra Captain type for our Grafii. That also allows us to choose our legendary arsenal as our other Terra Captain. And Articuno will have access to Terra Flying, Ice, and Fire. Yes. This might not be Kyurem White, but we'll be able to freeze and burn our opponents all with one Pokemon. So how do these changes really impact our matchup against 1Z Bonnet and the Sully Hole Scar Horse? I keep calling him 1Z. I know it's red. You can't fool me. I can see the darkness that lies inside of you. So prepare yourself, because the more that we unlock that darkness, the more powerful the Victorian Shadows will become. As usual, if you would like to skip straight into the action, there will be a time skip for you to click on and jump straight to the battle. However, if you'd like more details on the horde that we're bringing this week, stick around and check out the team builder. Now, of course, let's review Onesie's team first. You might recall that in last season of the Pokemon Premier League, he benefited from time. But time is not on his side this time. I will not fall victim to running out of time just because we're having a good battle. His team this season is Garchomp, Iron Hands, Iron Crown, Pelipper, Galarian Weezing, Basku Legion, Kingdra, which can Terra into a Steel or a Water type, Combuskin, Raichu, Toucanon, and Bisharp, 
which can Terra into Flying, Steel, or Dark type. Now this means that he has a variety of different tools that he can employ. There are the very obvious rain team pairings. He can bring Pelipper and have a torrential downpour that will increase the speed of his Kingdra or Basque Legion alongside boosting their water type moves. It even removes the fire type weakness from a few of his Pokemon. And on top of all that, he does not have to bring rain. Rather, to be more specific, if he brings rain, it will benefit my team as much as it will benefit his team. Look at my team. Do you see the Arcaludon? That's right, Onesie. I saw what you did with Arcaludon last season, and now it is my turn to take that power to an even higher peak. And also, if you bring rain against me, I will be using Electro Shot, so I don't suggest that you go down that path. Now, what do we have? In anticipation of Onesie Bonnet not bringing rain against my team, this week, our dedicated lead will be Annihilate. Annihilate has just enough speed for a neutral natured max speed Garchomp. After that, I pumped a lot into HP and defense to avoid the one hit KO from a terrifying adamant Bisharp with max attack. Annihilate is here, he's on the team, and he can't wait to really tear it up for the Victorian Shadows. After Annihilate, we have our Primarina. Primarina has a very interesting set this week. Primarina, I decided to run with the Fairy Feather item, which actually boosts its fairy type moves by 20%. This way I can throw off Moonblast and Draining Kiss, Sparkling Aria and Flip Turn are not boosted, but I will have ample opportunity to use those moves as well. For the only time that I will be clicking Sparkling Aria will really be if I anticipate the Galarian Weezing to come in. Otherwise, the Fairy Moves are the way to go this week. You will see that Primarina has a lot of speed invested. I went with Modest with enough speed invested in order to outspeed us Max Speed Bisharp or a Bisharp that is just trying to outspeed my Arcaludon that does not have any investment. Doing so will also allow our Primarina to outspeed all but the most jolly of Iron Hands, and I do not anticipate him putting that much speed on his Iron Hands, because surely he's going to want some bulk on the Iron Hands. Coming off the bench this week, we also have our Grafai Eye. It is going to be our Terra Captain alongside Bronzong this week. Grafai Eye will be Terra Dark. It will be running U-Turn, Knock Off, Poison Jab, and Taunt, with Poison Touch. Between Poison Touch and Poison Jab, that will give us around a 51% chance to poison Pokemon when using Poison Jab, and I can use Protective Pads to protect myself from a possible Rocky Helmet on a Galarian Weezing or the Rough Skin on Garchomp. That way my HP does not get whittled down, and I can throw off myriad opportunities to poison his team while I pivot around with a Pokemon on my side that speed ties his fastest Pokemon naturally, which is his Raichu. The other interesting thing here is that Grafia gives me a great offensive hit into his Iron Crown, and if needed, I can use the Poison Jab to do a decent chunk to everything else that does not take damage from knockoff. Our Caledon has a really creative set this week. I was pleased to come up with the set that runs Metal Sound, Reflect, Draco Meteor, and Flash Cannon. I have equipped our Caludon with the Eject Pack so that after I use my Draco Meteor, my stats will drop and Eject Pack will immediately swap me out. I anticipate that his immediate swap ins to my Arcaludon will be his Iron Crown or the Iron Hand with an Assault Vest, both of which I do not want to stay in with afterwards. But Later in the battle, after I have exhausted my eject pack to get me some switching momentum, I will be returning with the metal sound. And after he hears the metal sound, the special defense will drop, allowing our Caludon to drop almost any Pokemon on his team with a little bit of prior damage or entry hazards and a Draco Meteor as his defenses will be minus two on special defense. Keep in mind with this investment, I have 
just enough speed on my Arcaludon to outrun a max speed neutral nature Basque Legion. And I took special attack away until I could barely KO a max specially defensive Iron Hands with a Draco Meteor if the Iron Hands was at minus two special defense. After that, I have my Darkrai. Darkrai is carrying a Choice Scarf on the off chance that Onesie makes the mistake of bringing rain to this matchup. Most likely he would be running a speed neutral nature in the rain. And of course I can take advantage of that because Darkrai is still faster than neutral nature Kingdra or Basque Legion in the rain. And Darkrai just has good coverage for his entire team with the Choice Scarf to make sure that I won't be beaten out by any rain matchups. Now let me know what you all think of that team because our last team member this week is going to be Bronzong. A little bit of roll compression here just to hear the bell toe for onesie. And that bell toll will have iron defense, body press, psychic noise, and stealth rock. I went with levitate with Terra poison this week as Terra steel gave opportunities for focus blast to hit from iron crowns or close combat or draining punch, just fighting type moves in general from Iron Hands, and I could absolutely see my Bronzong being in a position to take hits from those Pokemon. Bronzong is actually running max HP, max defense, special defense, and that's because it's our primary switch in to the Iron Crown. And from there, I can slowly whittle it down to make sure that it is in range for a knockoff from Grafai Eye, as I do anticipate to see maybe some Colber Berries around on this team. Now, ladies and gentlemen, friends, enemies, and honored guests. That's going to be the team this week. Thank you for sticking around for the team builder. And now that the summoning ritual is complete, let's get into the battle. Fool. Ah, yes, Red. It is time for us to meet on the battlefield once again. You all can see here that he has decided to bring Bisharp, whom I suspected going into this match will most likely be Terra Flying. That's accompanied by Basco Legion, Galarian Weezing, Iron Hands, Garchomp, and Iron Crown. If you skipped our team builder, we have a Choice Scarf Darkrai, a very speedy Eject Pack Draco Meteor and Metal Sound Arcaludon, our dedicated lead, will be our Primeape, <laughs> Primeape Evolved maybe, our Annihilate, taking on the power and the fervor of our girder that fell in the last match, alongside our Terra Dark Grafai Eye, our Terra Poison Bronzong, and our Fairy Feather, very speedy Primarina. Now Red, I want you to show me the darkness that is unlocked inside of you. We are going to lead this match with our Annihilate, and he leads with his Iron Hands. This gives us a few different opportunities here, but I decided to click Bulk Up, expecting him to possibly go for the Electric type move to get as much damage as possible on me. I knew with Bulk Up I could handle any attack that he would throw at me, and that would also give me some information as to the investment that he was carrying on his Iron Hands for the attack investment. He goes immediately out to his Iron Crown, and that tells me that maybe he doesn't want to hit my Annihilate. You all might have noticed that I did not put Annihilate's signature move, Rage Fist, on this set. I know Onesie, and I know that he knows that he does not want to touch my Annihilate with a move. Every time Annihilate get hit, gets hit, that means that the Rage Fist gets powered up, and more and more of that power is imbued, raising the power of Rage Fist. But if I know Onesie, he won't touch my Annihilate unless he absolutely has to. And that's why I just decided to completely forego Rage Fist this week. I did not think I'd get hit that often. Uh, so yeah, that's why we went with a more defensive Annihilate. I decided to go into Bronzong to easily soak any hits, and here we have a wonderful game of 50-50s. Now this is actually the female form of Basque Legion. Basque Legion in the female form most commonly carries special attacks. If he went for the ghost attack and I swapped into my Grafai, I would be immune. 
But if you went for the water type attack, and I swapped into my Grafii, I would have a very unconscious Grafii. Just based off of the adaptability boost, uh, he could also set up rain with his Basco Legion and then be faster. I decide to stay in to see what he's going to go for, expecting him to go for the rain dance or perhaps go for the water type move. But what what kind of, I have a normal type in the back, onesie. What is this clicking of the shadow ball as though I don't have an immunity just ready to swap in? I do get a little bit of chip damage here and that damage, I was like, I, I can't tell really what to take from that damage. Does he have investment of some sort? Uh, he did less damage to me when the Shadow Ball, and he, so I know he's not Specs with that damage. I do get a little bit of HP back, and then here I think it's way too obvious to swap into Grafii, and I also thought, well, if I go into Grafii, he sets up the rain, he'll be faster than me, and I also could go into Grafi Eye and he just throws off a water type move or maybe even swap out immediately to the Iron Hands. Uh, so I decided to make a mid ground play thinking that he would either set up Rain Dance or swap out to Iron Crown perhaps. And I go out to my Dark Cry. He does neither of those and just goes for the Hydro Pump. So I could have just stayed in there and kept on going for Psychic Noise to whittle this down. Now that we're in here with my Choice Scarf Dark Cry. I do not foresee him staying in. Hmm. Foresee. I wonder what other attacks will be foreseen in this battle. But I don't think he's going to stay in here. And so the real question is, what does he swap into my Darkrai? Probably the Galarian Weezing. I could also see Iron Hands coming in on a Dark type move if he thinks that he can soak up the hit with maybe an Assault Vest or something like that. Remember at this point in the battle, I have not hit the Iron Hands, so I'm really not sure what damage I have, I can really do to it. So I do swap again, expecting him to swap out as well. I go back out to my Annihilate, thinking, okay, if he goes Iron Crown, then I could go back to Bronzong, but if he goes back out to the Iron Hands, then I can throw off an attack, and we're back at the start of the battle. Iron Hands versus Annihilate. This time, I'm not gonna go for a bulk up, expecting him to swap out again, and expecting him to go back to the Iron Crown, I am going to go for Drain Punch. Uh, that would allow me to get a little bit of HP back if he stays in and attacks me with Iron Hands just because Iron Hands has such a gargantuan HP stat. But if he goes out to the Iron Crown, I was trying to make sure that the Iron Crown was whittled down. It doesn't have good recovery. And I could make sure that it was in range for a knockoff from Terra Dark Grafia if he had Colberberry. There's the attack I foresaw, the future sight. We actually make a little bit of a ballsy prediction here that he's not going to go for Psychic Noise right away because last time I went into Bronzong immediately. So I stayed in and made sure that he was in range for a Dark Pulse for my Dark Cry or Grafi Eye using Knock Off, even if he has the Colbert Berry. And now I can go out to my Bronzong and let him hear the bell tolling here. Now, Bronzong is also a good pivot here because I don't have to worry about the future sight hitting me at the end of next turn. Uh, I figured he would probably go for uh, a Volt Switch here, but if he stayed in, the temptation to hit him with the Body Press was so high. I didn't think he would just go back out to Basket Legion because I've already shown that I'm going to hit that thing with the Psychic Noise, and I didn't know what held item the Basket Legion had. Uh, it's taking Entry Hazard damage, and so I thought maybe it had some sort of like type boosting item or maybe a Colberberry. And I ran some calcs and I was like, okay, even if he has the Colberberry, it looks like he should be in range for my Grafii to knock him out with the knockoff from Terra Dark boosted knockoff. Once again, I don't know what type of main character energy is leading him to just click Shadow Ball when I have a normal type in the back. I thought he would risk the Hydro Pump, which is why I did not immediately go out to my Grafi Eye. However, it is okay for Bronzon to go down there because I can go out to Grafi Eye now and click Terra Dark Boosted Knockoff. It's time for our Terra Captain to now hit the field and show this Basque Legion exactly what we came here to do. After we terrestrialize, we can see that even though 
it's burning bright. It is the darkness that gives us our power. And we are boosting the power of this knockoff. He stays in and doesn't die. Uh, maybe he'll miss his hydro pump? No. Okay, so that went as poorly as that could have gone. Uh, I don't know if I just miscalced. I don't know if he has somehow bulky and offensive Basque Legion at the same time. I thought I could KO him from that range with a knockoff, even with the Culber Berry. Uh, so we lose Grafii for no reason. We do get a double down and mm, I do love some double downs, but it wasn't worth it. I really needed Grafii for the end game, especially given that he didn't bring rain. Grafii outsped his entire team from what I've seen so far. Now on the double down, we went on to our Kaludon and I had to check to see if he had Focus Blast. We saw the same situation last week, and I left our Kaludon in on the fighting type move. I'm not doing it again this week. I hard swap out to Primarina, and since Primarina has spe fantastic special defense, we easily soak the Focus Blast, which he hit, by the way, really sick of the main character energy, just saying. He hits the Focus Blast, goes for the Volt Switch, and I was really tempted here to just throw off a move because I knew that the wheezing was coming in and I needed to KO it. Now again, we have a very fast Primarina. Unless this wheezing is running timid max speed shenanigans, wheezing is not outspeeding us. So we're gonna stay in here and we're going to continue to pop bubble on these beautiful misty surging opponents that we have here so we are able to knock out the wheezing and after that he goes out to garchomp with the misty surge on the field i was very surprised that he brought misty surge i real that's why i put the lumberry on my primate i assumed that i was going to get burned at some point by the wheezing but there was never any threat of that at all i really considered punching glove up before the battle but uh yeah, Punching Glove would have gone a lot farther here than the Lumberry did, that's for sure. Now, our Annihilate comes in. We take the Rough Skin. One other reason why I wanted that Punching Glove. And we manage to hold on with one HP. That is the willpower of the Victorian Shadows. And also, that's a little bit of... I, I guess... I Red calls it Frenergy. I do not think it's Frenergy. I just think he holds on out of spite, right? It's kind of like how he's hitting all these focus blasts and hydro pumps. Sometimes you just gotta do it to your opponent out of spite. Uh, we're able to get some fantastic chip damage on the Iron Hands, and we got rid of the Yachi Berry on Garchomp. So this is really setting up the end game here because now that he no longer has the Yachi Berry there, the Basket Legion no longer has its uh, Culber Berry. Actually, it's dead, so I guess both are true but I've removed some of the obstacles for my Dark Rider sweep at the end of this. All I need now is to call a few turns right in the end game. Now here, I went into this situation knowing that I was going to Draco Meteor and the Eject Pack would switch me out into Primarina on his fighting type attack and then my Primarina would outspeed him and finish him off. And that is exactly the situation we're in. We managed to hit the Draco, Eject Pack out, Pre-Marina in, and we easily soak up this move with a Drain Punch. The only way for this Iron Hands to outspeed me is for it to be Jolly, with over 200 invested in its speed, and it outspeeds us. Are you kidding? Pre-Marina, all of those all those lessons, all the training. I took you out to the beach. We did, we knocked out so many Magikarp to get the speed EVs and we get outsped by the Iron Hands. Are you kidding me? Do you guys even understand how many Pokemon I slaughtered just to get the speed EVs for that Primarina? I don't understand. Why is Iron Hands faster? It shouldn't be faster. Have you seen those thighs? Have you seen those thighs? 
I know I'm supposed to be looking at the hands, but have you seen the thighs? Those are slowing it down. That's why it floats, because it's not fast. I don't understand the predicament that I'm in. Now, if you all go and ask Alex about Frenergy, <laughs> he'll tell you that that's what brought him the win here. I think I'm going to have to figure out a way for us to put up a shield because here if I can finish off at least the iron crown then maybe <clears throat> not even now I do wish I had light screen at the end there that would have given up given us a little bit of a shot because now I need to use dark pulse to finish off the iron crown but if I'm locked in the Dark Pulse, then I can't finish off the Iron Hands. So I decide to call that he will miss a Focus Blast and lock into Ice Beam. With Ice Beam, I have a chance of finishing off the Iron Hands, and that will give me super effective damage against the Garchomp and against the Terra Flying Bisharp. So we decide to lock into that just here in the end game. That also gives us the Freeze Chance but I was more banking that he would be missing a Focus Blast. And with the time running out, we hit our Ice Beam. That's a three or four hit KO. And he does hit yet another Focus Blast to take us down. I do not concede that this was Frenergy. I do not think that anime power up time for some pro tag coon is why I lost this. I lost this because, uh, well, have you seen those thighs? Thank you all for watching this week's battle of the Victorian Shadows up against the Soliol Skarmors. Be sure to check out our opponent's side in the description. And please go over and let him know that Frenergy is not why he won this. I see what he's been working with over there. And I even tried to take a piece of it for myself. But apparently, that wasn't good enough. <sighs> Next week, week number three. The Victorian Shadows will be taking on... Mephesto. Ah, yes. One of our old time partners from the shadows from the darkness you all know what he's been cooking up over there and maybe that's what we need next instead of trying to unlock the power of the shadows we need to use the innate chaos that's within us so for next week we'll be taking on Mephesto and the nice jinx and I hope you have a wonderful night goodbye